So we're going to Phil's Firewood and Land Management in uh, Clear Lake, Wisconsin today. And uh, go visit him. Wolfridge Splitters is going to be there. Um, and uh, just a bunch of Firewood producer buddies of his, it sounds like. I'm not, I don't know Phil Anderson personally, but I see him on Facebook and groups and such. So I was like, yeah, we should go down it's only a two hour drive so we're filling up here in Minong at the a and w uh lucky is this like lucky seven gas station but um we uh a tobacco leaf free you can't can't you can't you can't mute this with the fresh what the heck? uh so I'm excited to just see other firewood operation you know we're getting into the bagged firewood and Eventually, we're going to move into the bulk firewood sales, but I'd like to just see how equipment works and how systems work and, you know, how to just chit chat. So it's not like there'll be, he's got a kiln. Uh, he does sell bagged wood and then he also has some commercial clients. So they're going to do like a from seven to or four to seven tonight. They're going to do a like a, a professional firewood gathering. I brought a picaroon, two picaroons and some stickers and an axe handle just to show off the stuff we do for whiskey river but mainly it's going to be for the firewood side of 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 the biz and uh make some content i'm really 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 excited to meet bob of wolfridge um and see wolfridge splitters because i see them online all the time but i have not ever ran one myself um and uh specifically i guess the conveyors too i like i like the idea of eventually having a conveyor so but yeah, we're just putting diesel in right now. This is the negative side of filling up at a big diesel pump is that the nozzle doesn't fit in this truck. I'm going to pull this filler neck apart this summer and make it so that I can actually stick a big tank or a big uh, nozzle in this in this thing. Beautiful day in Wisconsin. We uh, All the snow is finally melting or slash melted. We have uh, We got like 14 inches of snow last week. And uh, this week, it's been in the 50s, so we're all melting off. It looks like the forecast has finally changed, so spring is here. Thank goodness. I know we didn't have a crazy winter, but it was uh, one of those things that um, where we spent the whole winter wondering if it was going to get frigid cold and start snowing, and it never really did. So that's just how it is. Get a receipt. I got to run inside and get it. All right, so... Um, I'll be right back. I swear to God, I always have to get a receipt. I don't know what that is with my luck, but. So we're, he has a Halverson 140B, I believe, uh, also, which is the same processor that our buddy John had. Um, John just sold it. So we won't be making any content on that um, in the near future, unless we decided we want to get one. But I, he gave me the opportunity to buy it. We couldn't buy it because it's too big for my skits here. I've got a, uh, what do I have? A 242, I don't remember what my, I don't even remember what my Caterpillar is. But anyway, it's too, it's like a, it's a mid-sized machine. And uh, the, Halverson splitter is very heavy um, and I just felt like it was too heavy for, for it. So we didn't end up buying it off of him, but the Phil has one. So it'll be interesting to see if there's anything different about that Halverson versus the Halverson that we ran that was John's. So um, we are looking for a way to process firewood now that John doesn't have his processor on the front of the skid steer. We only got to use that for a little bit of time, so we'll see. The uh, I'm trying to figure out if we want a stationary one to install on the property that we bring logs to, or if we want something that's mobile that we can do a uh, like take it uh, go process for people. Uh, that was what John did specifically, and he was doing 10, 15 trucks a year of uh, semi truck loads a year of bloggers cords so I was like 
if we got a mobile one, we could help him out with his customers that he's not going to be able to take care of anymore, that he doesn't have his processors. So kind of a little partnership there, maybe. We'll see. So kind of looking at processors now, trying to figure out what we want to get. I'm hoping that this year we can make something happen, but we'll see. No, that's another thing. So just kind of going down here to talk about pricing and how uh, that works. I don't know if Phil does processing on the, uh, like goes and processes uh, on location for folks, but that's something that I haven't really talked to any other people besides John about, so kind of curious about it. This reminds me of uh, as we go further south in Wisconsin, you get these dairy farms that were there, you know, that used to be a dairy farm back in the day. We don't have those in northern Wisconsin, but where I'm from in southern Wisconsin, they're everywhere. So as we get further south, you see the industrial agriculture. Is that Clear Lake? Don't stick your hand anywhere where you wouldn't want to lose it. Yeah. Cool. Mine's like, you know, it's like a minute. Oh, we can do it. Or two minutes, something, so I can get like some footage on what I'm We, we can run whatever uh, duration you want. What? You run from this side? Well, yeah, if I'm running it solo, I always run from that side. Ah, gotcha. The only time I run it from this side is if I got somebody feeding me or. You know, if I'm running a bunch of resplit or something like that, where I'm okay. not using a log. Yeah, it's up. Processing. Mm -hmm. And over here, I obviously was processing on a windy day, so I was missing the tote. You know, that's a huge difference. 
Now, granted, I'll scoop that out and I will get tossed off the corner someplace, and I'll probably end up finding it out of the snow bank next spring. <laughs> Halverson 140B, similar to the uh, one that, it's actually the same exact model as the one that we ran at the place that was owned by, or at our place, it's owned by John. So, same exact unit, a lot more hours on it, but he really likes it. That's actually the one we did on trade about two years ago. Hey, my name is Bob. And I'm Brandon. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. This is the Wolfridge 28 SHO. It's the super high output model. Um, this one has got a 28 ton cylinder, a Honda V-twin gas engine on it. And uh, this has got about a five and a half second cycle time. This is one of the top of the line splitters that we offer. Um, well, this is like full commercial, ready to make firewood all day. All right, so I'm uh, here with the man who uh, owns this facility, uh, who we came to visit. And uh, this is Phil. Hey. So we're standing inside of his homemade firewood kiln yep. that he built himself and uh, I figured why not have him tell us about it so how'd you build it what is it built out of well I mean it's pretty simple it started out life as a 32 foot insulated van body off of a delivery truck um, by the time it was already an insulated body it already had the insulation already had the aluminum floor condensation drains built into it so it took a lot of the work out of it to start with yeah um, the heat source it's just your basic old wood burning furnace. Um, basically, it's set up. The furnace I'm using is comparable to one that would heat about a four thousand square foot house through forced air. Yep. Yep. Forced hot air, no hot water, none of that stuff. Um, by using hot air, I can generate more temp than you would an outdoor boiler. Outdoor boiler, you're limited to 160, 180 degree air temp with a heat exchanger. Versus with this setup, I'm able to pump 240, 250 degree air into here. Um, so that's a faster, that, that allows you to, to to have a faster drying time. Yeah, or heat yeah it, it, it definitely gets the heat up quicker because yeah. I put more heat in. Right. Um, as far as the circulation goes, very simple, straightforward, you know, just like a home heating system, I've got my hot air coming in mm -hmm. and my return air pulling off the bottom back into the stove. Um, no additional venting. I didn't bother replacing the weather stripping on the doors or anything because why seal it up airtight just to turn around and add venting to it? Yeah. Because you need fresh air coming into this to like let humidity out. Is that how this works? You you need to allow the the some of the humidity to escape somehow. Yeah. Um, with hot air wood burning furnaces, you have a lot of natural dehumidification there to begin with. But when I load two full cord of fresh cut and split oak, for example, that's a lot of water. It's right. got to go someplace. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Do you, uh, what does this look like on a super cold day when you like open it up? Is it like steam out? Is it it, cool? it, if it's in the single digits down around zero, yeah. it will make a, a steam cloud uh, that you can't see through. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. We ran our, our first attempt at certification back in February or late January, I think it was this year. And it was actually building up frost on the back of it where it was venting around. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, a pile of humidity leaking out. Yeah. So have you you haven't had to add any insulation to the walls? You just insulated uh, this wall, right? Between yeah. The, the only wall I've had, or only insulation I've done, is my divider wall between the stove and the body of the kiln. That's insulated with four inches of mineral wool insulation. It's a fire rated product. Uh, flash point on that somewhere 25, 2600 degrees. Right. So that is a fire rated product. Um, that whole wall is framed with steel stud two by fours. And that whole wall is only anchored at the top. That whole wall is able to float. So as it heats up, cools down, expands, contracts, it doesn't pull itself apart. Right. Um, and all these joints that are tied to it. Yeah. Right. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The, the joints all have some give to them. You can see the plumber strapping, holding yeah. the ductwork up. So that's not rigid mounted anywhere. Um, it... it, it comes down to the years of experience I had building commercial ovens and when I say commercial ovens I'm talking stuff that was 14 foot wide 20 feet long and 12 feet tall yeah yeah you know 
the the stuff I learned building those commercially taught me basically the construction methods for building something like this. Right. What is your? Uh, are you? Are you? He, forgive me for the terminology of what I don't know. Right. Okay. But uh, are you drying wood in here, or are you cooking wood to to make it certifiable for uh, the bugs and all of that? Actually, I'm doing both. Okay. The difference with my kiln versus most commercial kilns, it takes me longer to bring the wood up to that 140 degree core temp for 60 minutes. Okay. So that longer time building up to that heat, I'm actually drying the wood prior to heat treating. Makes sense. A lot of guys with commercial kilns, they're bringing it up to that temperature faster and then potentially drying it on its way down. Mm -hmm. um, there's arguments either way, which one's better, which right. one's worse. I find that, that bringing it up slowly yields a more consistent dry. Mm -hmm. The commercial kilns, a lot of times, they'll see below 2% surface moisture, but if they don't leave it in long enough on the backside, they'll still have a core moisture 25-30%. Right, right. So the so the drying is the byproduct of the of the bringing it up to temp to be it make it certifiable. For for myself, I actually am more concerned about the drying okay. than I am yeah. the heat treat. Gotcha. Obviously, the heat treat. You know, I'm already right on the edge of that once it's dry. Right. So I might as well take it. That little bit longer, right. get the heat treat, get the certification, mm -hmm. then it can go anywhere. Yeah, you can ship it anywhere. So that allows you to ship across county line and such, or what is the what does that allow you? What does that open you up to? Right now, I currently hold a heat treat certification from the state of Wisconsin, which allows it to go anywhere statewide, state parks, county parks, that sort of thing, and it also will act as my certification run for my USDA application. Okay. Once I receive USDA app approval, which they said it's just a matter of paperwork at this point, then I can ship nationwide. Okay, cool. Sweet. So this this van body that you pulled off has basically given you the freedom to potentially ship anywhere in the country. Exactly. Yeah. Without really spending a whole boatload of money on a on a new commercial kiln. If I had to build it all over again and start from scratch, most of what I've got in here is available from Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, the van bodies themselves, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, auctions, Around here, yeah. twenty five hundred bucks, three thousand bucks, you're going to have the van body. Mm -hmm. You know, so realistically, short of the computers and software and the probes for that record keeping aspect, yeah, this could easily be built by somebody with minimal building experience. Five to six thousand bucks. Yeah, sweet. That's awesome. Cool. Well, if you were to do it again, if you were to start over and build yourself a kiln, uh, what would you do differently? Would there be anything you did differently? Well, the next one sitting right next door here, this okay. uh, thirty-six foot van trailer. So a little so bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Obviously, with it being bigger, I am going to be focusing more on more airflow. Um, Current calculations with the fan I've got picked out for that, I should be exchanging air inside that chamber every 22 to 25 seconds. Um, there, there's when it comes to drying, your air movement is almost more critical than your temperature. Right. However, that being a bigger unit, that will have more wood in it per batch. So I will be probably adding an oil drip system. To utilize waste oil, obviously, I do a lot of my own maintenance. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. always got drain Buckets oil on. Yeah. Oh, I got barrels on yeah, yeah. my own. And you're going to utilize that into the, it's going to be a similar furnace like this one? Yeah, basically, yeah. it'll be almost identical to this furnace. It, it'll be real comparable to the old double barrel wood stoves that a lot of people had in their cabin and stuff yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, that stove will actually be the main barrel of it. Will actually be an 80 gallon air compressor tank. Okay. You know, the upper barrel of it will be slightly smaller, eight inch flue. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'll probably run a quarter inch pipe oil drip into that as well. Yeah. Just to um, up your BTUs. So it's 
putting out. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the whole goal with it. You know, I'll still be burning primarily wood scraps um, and coal wood. So it'll be, that'll be this summer's project. Sweet. Well, I'm excited to see that. Awesome. Well, thanks for having us out. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, so that was awesome. We learned. I learned a bunch. Uh, Tyler and I have just started talking for the, like the last uh, 10 minutes about what we learned and what we're thinking and such. We actually met another local firewood producer, um, the woodshed that is just a hand, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes down the road from us. So that was pretty cool. Um, Phil's a great guy, got an awesome operation. It's, it's sweet to see how he diversifies inside of firewood. You know, when a lot of people probably in the world think about firewood, they think about um, just logs being turned into little pieces of wood and, and being able to burn, but there's so many different varieties and, and opportunities to make money. And that's one thing I really like about the firewood industry is like, there's a piece for everybody. Even if you um, don't have the ability to get semi truck loads of logs in and you want to, you know, get into some sort of firewood business, you could, you could even make money. And uh, the Ohio wood burner, uh, Joe talks about this, like you could make money buying already split firewood off of another firewood producer and putting it in bags and then selling it out in front of your house. You know, it's like um, the margins are there to do it. So yeah, it was just cool to see like the variety of different woods and how he sells it, how he markets it, how he dries it, how he ships it. So, um, so yeah, thanks for coming along. We're going to get some dinner because uh, we're hungry and uh, see you next time.